Hello there, Runneteers, and it's Manny again, and like I told you, the information was just Fast and Furious. I went over all the event guide uh, for the Walt Disney World Marathon weekend, so I think that I uh, I got it all down. Never fear, a uh, Run Disney nerd is here. Uh, so anyway, so I went over it, so I'm going to go over the whole guide with you, at least as much as possible. I'm not going to go over a few things because... It's it, like for the example the road closures. I'm not going to go step by step You guys can go ahead and look especially if you're driving, but I'm gonna go over it right now uh, Before we do guys. We're almost at a thousand guys that just dropped the video So I'm just gonna say it real briefly guys, please subscribe if you haven't already it really really helps the channel a lot please share the information guys out there and Again keep asking your questions uh, down there or direct message me on the running ears on Facebook uh, again, Manny runs Disney on both uh, social media, Instagram and Facebook. I'll try to get into the TikTok a little bit more. Uh, but without further ado, let's get into dissecting the digital guide. So when you hit the tab, you're going to see Mar uh, Marathon 2024 Weekend. And it's just a welcome uh, right here. So when you do is click on the top Weekend Events. As you come down, there's going to be a bunch of things that you're going to be able to see. Health and Fitness Expo. 5K, 10K, Half Marathon, Marathon, important information. You're going to also have the LLS, LLS Mission, which is one of the sponsors. Uh, a couple of other things, including other races. But guys, uh, oh, and all down here you have all booths. So start looking at this, Advent Health Citizen, the Sani Water, uh, Echelon, I believe, Enterprise, uh, Honey Stinger. There's a bunch of these. These are the vendors that are going to be there. So these are the booths. Shocks Mission are going to be there also. Of course, you guys have to go by and say hi to Jeff Galloway. We have the the, the beans, the sports beans. We also have a couple places where you can actually uh, frame your medals. Uh, uh, this other one is actually pretty cool because you can put your time on it. Fit to Run is a great place in case you forget something. I bought stuff uh, from there before. Here's a couple of other vendors as we scroll all the way down. Sparkle has some really cool things. And then, of course, we have the sweaty bands, the sweaty bands, and that's pretty cool. But as we go to the top again, we're going to be able to see one by one the Health and Fitness Expo. Right here, guys, this is very important. It's going to have the times uh, of the expo per day. So the first day is going to be 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. And then, of course, the next day is going to be 12 to 7 and just so forth and so on. But you're going to see here virtual queue, guys, event waivers race, bib, and shirt pickup, expo transportation. Uh, the one here, the mini, is just a minivan that you pick up, uh, so it's up by lift, uh, and a bunch of the maps here. So guys, if you have any questions about the maps, uh, they're right here. So we'll click on virtual queue. The process is very, very simple. It's basically like if you're doing the, uh, the Rise of the Resistance, the Tron, Guardians of the Galaxy, if you look down, the one thing that we have to look is when can we do it? It's going to be 8.30 the, uh, the morning of the first day of the expo. And it's only for the first day, and you can only put up to six people there. So a group of six can get in there. Um, if you guys have more than that, then I would suggest a second person gets in here also. So it's going to be pretty easy to do. Uh, event waivers. You should have already signed your waiver. You can go and this explains to you how you can sign your waiver right now. Guys, if you haven't, never fear. You're going to be able to do it at the expo also. But guys, you can log into your account and you'll be able to see your waiver. It'll actually prompt you to say there's something missing and you can actually do it. It doesn't take but a couple of minutes. Once you do that, then you'll be able to get your check-in pass. The race bib and shirt pickups. Uh, this is going to be at a different location. So once you pick up uh, your bib, you're going to pick up your bib in one location and you're going to need that check-in pass and you're going to go to a separate place to get your shirt uh, pickup. And it explains to you right there. Expo transportation, if you're staying on site 30 minutes before uh, the expo begins, that's when they start shuttling us there. And 30 minutes after it finishes, they will still shuttle you there. So guys, make sure that you see this. There'll also be signs at your resort. Okay, I'm gonna knock over the minivan, but here is the locations. You're gonna see the A, B, and C. The A is basically where all the merchandise is gonna be. And there's some picture ops, guys. So make sure that you stop at some pictures uh, right there. Uh, for Wine and Dine, they were right there. 
A B is actually where the shirt pickup and the expo part of it is. The C is actually where the bib pickup is. So this is where you're going to need your check-in pass and your ID. So that way you can pick up your bib. Hey guys, there's a couple of other maps on the bottom, uh, but we're gonna go, we're gonna continue on. So now we hit the 5K tab and it's gonna get us to the group opening and closing times for the 5K. If you notice, it's gonna be 345. Uh, that's when they open up and they, stay, they, they will all open up at that time and they have different closing times. So make sure you get there to your corral in time before it closes. When we click on race etiquette, and I'm gonna do a whole video on race etiquette uh, because this kind of touches on it, but I, I think, I believe there's much more to this. But the important one here is when it says, uh, don't, don't walk or run more than two people next to each other. Again, you don't wanna block anybody's progress. So you gotta be, you know, just uh, a single file. Um, it's gonna be the best thing, especially when you're groups of more than two. So just remember this, but go ahead and look over this uh, real quick. Some of the most important ones here for the reminders are make sure that you get there by 4 a.m. on race day. Uh, there, You have to go through security check-in, okay? If you go in around there, uh, they can kick you out. So guys, make sure that you go through security check-in. Those are the important ones there. And of course, you're gonna be going over to the uh, to the staging area and make sure that the people can see your bib. So make sure that's out. So the next tab is actually spectator viewpoints. And this one's gonna be very simple. It's gonna be very simple for the 10K also. You can see people at the Epcot parking lot. There's gonna be two different locations, but it basically gives you the times that it opens up. And basically it's very, very basic. They're actually, I had done this before, so there's actually gonna be some signs so that you can actually see where you can actually spectate from the parking lot. Next, we go to transportation. Transportation is very important, guys, because this is gonna tell you basically when the transportation starts and so forth and so on. So for 5K and the 10K, they're gonna be from uh, 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. And uh, they start going back to the resorts from 6.30 to 8.30 a.m., guys. So that actually means that if you're pretty fast, you're gonna be, uh, you're gonna actually be waiting there for a while. But again, this also includes the uh, the swan and the dolphin, the shades of green. So it, it, and all the Disney resorts, the on-site resorts are gonna be included in this, in, in the transportation. So next up is the photo pass. This is gonna be interesting. A lot of people have been asking about this. Guys, I'm gonna put this out for a little bit here and I'm gonna post this on the social media page. This is important, remember that you're gonna have the 11 digit race ID followed by your five digit bib number. If it's four numbers, then just put a zero in front of it. Uh, that's the way it's gonna be. But if you look towards the bottom and we're scrolling down a little bit to the bottom, we're gonna enlarge it. Guys, this is going to be the code that you can get your picture. So make sure that you get the first 11, those small X's are going to be your bib number. So now we're gonna go to the 5K, the course, and we're gonna enlarge this. It's gonna be very simple. We're gonna start off in the parking lot of Epcot, and this is gonna be towards the top of the screen right here. We're gonna run around. It's gonna be a little over a mile before we actually enter the backside, and we're gonna start running the back part of Epcot, and we're gonna run through uh, World Showcase. We're gonna run around there. There'll be some picture opportunities. We're gonna run through mile number two. The good news is it looks like we're gonna run right in front of the new Walt statue that sits behind Spaceship Earth. And if you can see this, it looks like we're gonna run right through Guardians of the Galaxy before we turn out and exit through where, uh, where Test Track is. And then we finish off in the front of the parking lot. Now we're gonna briefly look at these. These are the Epcot lot uh, maps. So it's gonna be very, very simple. It shows you where you're parking, where the start groups are, where your union area is. Uh, it's gonna be very, very simple. It's right in front of Epcot. So it's it just, if you wanna take a look at it, just to make sure you know where the start group is, there's gonna be, again, the reunion area. And then there's also gonna be the Epcot start and staging map. Um, so there's gonna be a staging area. There will be characters there. They're usually up to four of them. They've done it lately where they rotate. So um, they might have uh, one person or one one character from Peter Pan 
and then the and all of a sudden they leave and another character for peter pan comes in so it continuously goes so uh but guys you have to start getting to your corral in time now we scroll back up and we hit the weekend events and now we're going to go over the 10k so once we get to the 10k we're going to look at the start group opening and closing times it's going to be basically the same for, uh, as the 5k so 345 is when the group opens and look at the, uh, the closing times now we will touch on reminders but it's basically going to be the same reminders uh, all throughout so i'm just going to basically uh just just in case but no it's basically the same one so i'm going to go right back uh, out of this so it's the same reminders as a 5k the spectator viewpoints is something that's uh again the times change a little bit here so if you notice uh, instead of 5 15 to, to whatever time it was it now starts at 5 30 uh for the finish line but it makes sense because again it's a 10k unofficial race results now when i click on this it's going to take me to the track shack right now they are not taking you know they they do not have it set up so if you try to put your name in it's basically going to tell you that and here it popped up that we're not ready yet once it is ready you can put your name in there and you can track runners now let's go to transportation the transportation is going to be important because again 3 to 5 a.m is when the buses start running you're going to be able to look at this and say all right when do they start going back 6 30 a.m. Uh, to 9 a.m. so it's going to take a little bit longer and again every Disney Resort including Shades of Green, uh, the Swan and the Dolphin Resorts and again if you read here this is important Skyliner and the monorails will not be running early on in the morning for any of the 5k and the 10k so guys just remember to read this okay uh, they do have a road closure map again uh, I'm not going to really go over this, but you can see what um, the red is what's closed, the blue is the alternate routes that you have, but that way you guys can see. I think Disney's done a really, really good job. There's maps here for the, obviously not for the 5K, they don't need one. But for the 10K, the half and the full, you're going to be able to see this. Um, so once we finish here, we're going to click back. We're not going to go over the minivan or the photo pass because we already did but we are going to go over the course map this is going to be awesome so we're going to start basically the same place we're going to go a different route we're going to run a couple of miles actually over a couple of miles outside of epcot there'll probably be some characters some djs then we actually go into epcot for a little bit we exit we go down the boardwalk we run around the boardwalk a couple of the hotels it's fun it's uh it's caution runners uh, boardwalk may be slippery and then we exit we enter through the backside again and we run around world showcase we run on the side uh, to the side of, of um, spaceship earth and we run through guardians again before we finish off in front of epcot and now we have other maps that are going to be basically the same exact maps that we looked at for the 5k so now we are going to go back and we are going to start looking at the half marathon so the half marathon is going to have a little bit different when it comes to the group opening and closing times so you guys can see right here that um, they have a little bit different so it's now going to be 315 for groups a through d and 4 a.m is when they start for e and f what that means is that uh, e and f cannot get into the corral until a little bit later it's not the worst thing in the world it's actually we did it for wine and dine it wasn't the worst thing reminders again reminders are just basically the same thing I keep clicking on this just thinking to myself maybe I missed something that's uh that's worth talking about but again make sure that your your bibs are visible that kind of stuff alrighty so now we're gonna go over to the spectator viewing points now if you notice there's a lot more spectator viewing and now the uh, the monorail is gonna come into play so make sure that you see this especially if you're gonna be a spectator or you have somebody in your family that's going to be a spectator because you're going to be able to spectate at the contemporary at uh, magic kingdom the main street you're going to be able to get in there from 5 15 a.m to 7 45 you're going to take the monorail so guys uh make sure that you get this information so if you want your family members to uh, do some spectating some cool spectating this is where you're going to be looking at it okay uh road closures oh no I, uh, did i hit on transportation transportation i'm sorry we do need to carry transportation because now it's going to be a little bit different from 2 30 to 4 30 a.m 
So a little bit earlier is when the buses are going to start. And of course they go a little bit later from 6 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. All right, so if you look down, it does say here that the monorail will be moving at 2.30. So the monorail will be available for the half marathon and I believe for the full marathon too. So remember guys, the monorail was not available for the 5K or the 10K, but it is available for the uh, the half marathon and I believe the full marathon. But again, still uh, the, um, the Skyliner is still not available. Again, uh, maybe and w when we get to it, it's gonna be more for the, the full marathon, but we'll get to that in a little bit. All right, so now we come up to road closures. Again, we're not gonna go over this. Uh, the red is gonna be what's closed. The blue is going to be what is, uh, what's the alternate route right there. Now we're gonna get to the map. Here's the exciting part. So now we're getting to the half marathon map. Again, we start off in Epcot. We are going to run towards Magic Kingdom, so we don't really hit any uh, any of Epcot, I believe. Very no, not none of Epcot, and we're going to be going towards Magic Kingdom. We actually run through the transportation center, then we go in through Magic Kingdom. You can see the route, so it's roughly going to be about a mile that we run inside of Magic Kingdom. Always a cool little run there. We exit the backside by where Frontierland is and we actually go to the side you're going to see the the little blue um is water stations where the w the the red the red cross is going to be first aid stations but you notice we run going back towards epcot we do uh had, hit some overpasses until we actually get into epcot we actually go in through where like figgy is i i was uh, uh like and, and you don't know if we're going to see figgy it's going to be cool if we can see figgy um, but we're gonna run and we're gonna exit a little bit different this time guys We're gonna run uh, through the side of spaceship earth, which we have not done in a while It has been a while since we have had this kind of finish So we're gonna hit this other map the Epcot lot But if you can see it's basically the same as the ones we've been seeing the staging areas are not gonna really really change So we're not really gonna even go over the Epcot start and staging because it's basically the same but now we're going to hit uh, the marathon. We're gonna uh, scroll down so we can look at the marathon, which is a, group, a big one. <laughs> so uh, here goes the starting, uh, the, the, start, the starting group opening and closing times. This again is very, very important. It looks like it's basically the same as the half marathon. So guys, again, this is when you gotta get to your corral. So make sure that you get to your corral in time before it closes. Once it closes, you have to get into the corral that's behind you. I keep clicking on reminders because I keep thinking maybe, maybe, maybe there's something I missed. Because again, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna do a whole video on just reminders. But again, um, oh, one of the things right here: emergency medical information can be filled out in the back of your bib. All right, so now let's go over to spectator viewpoints. We're gonna have even more here because the boardwalk is now gonna be added and parts of Hollywood Studio. But again, if you're gonna be able to, or you want to uh, see some people inside towards the end of the marathon there is a chance when it comes to like animal kingdom uh hollywood studios and of course epcot are you going to be able to see people inside yes but you're going to have to get a ticket now so you're going to have to have a ticket and a park reservation if it's still necessary to get in there transportation very very important basically the same thing as a half uh, 2 30 to 4 30 is when they're going to be running the transportation the buses and the monorail but now it, it they shuttle you till about 1:30 now, so that's going to be pretty cool. But again, the um, the Skyliner is not going to be running. You are going to have to have a park ticket after the run if you want to walk through there and take the Skyliner. But that's really up to you. Now here is the road closures. A lot more road closures, obviously. So you're going to see a lot more red, but a few blue here. And we are going to scroll down again. And now the big, the big one. We're going to look at the map. The map. And we're going to start as usual in Epcot. And we are going to actually run a little bit different. So now we're not going to go straight towards Magic Kingdom like in the half. So we're going to be able to see a little bit. And you can see a little bit. Uh, we run in the front part of Epcot uh, for yeah, a mile, you know, when we hit to my marker two. We're going to run up again the transportation center. And now you're going to see a little bit more uh, mileage. So we hit the transportation about mile marker seven, 
then we go into Magic Kingdom and we're gonna run a little bit more Magic Kingdom. Somebody pointed out to me, it was Prince Eric who pointed out, hey, I think we're gonna hit Tron. We're gonna run right by Tron. So there's a little bit more mileage and we come down towards Animal Kingdom and we run a lot through Animal Kingdom or we run quite a bit through Animal Kingdom. We hit about 14 and then we exit about 17 overall. So that's about three miles that we get into Animal Kingdom and the surrounding areas. It's a cool little run. Uh, I always enjoy it. But and, and guys, enjoy it the way you can because Dino Land USA might be going away soon. But then we exit, we go through 18, uh, 19, we come around. And this is where a lot of people don't like it. We walk, we run through Blizzard Beach parking lot. Uh, a few years back, we actually ran through Blizzard Beach. No more, but then we go up towards Hollywood Studios. We barely touch Hollywood Studios. Guys, we enter and we exit pretty quickly. So that's where, again, people can cheer you on. We're gonna go through the boardwalk, the backside of Epcot. We're gonna go through, um, there it is, through World Showcase. Run around World Showcase, guys. Guys, uh, I would advise you, especially if the balloon ladies are close to you, don't get on any rides. Uh, wait till afterward if you have a park ticket. Okay, then you're gonna exit towards the front again it looks like it's going to be on the side again so we're going to exit like we usually do on the side and finish in front okay and we still got these two maps they're basically the same maps that we have uh throughout the weekend so we're going to scroll back up to the top and we actually have uh when it comes to weekend events if we scroll down there is a tab with important information now guys, I'm not gonna go over this and I'm not gonna show you the video, but it's a good one to look at, uh, the costume guidelines, event waivers. Now this I'm gonna talk about over and over and over again, guys, because again, the star group opening and closing times. If you do not get there in time, you're gonna have to get in a corral behind you. So that is one of the things that you guys gotta remember. Again, reminders, I keep hitting on this tab and uh, but it's the same things over and over and over. Uh, so we're gonna kind of uh, wait, we're gonna click off this flag guidelines. This one's gonna be very interesting because you can carry flags. Those of you who are patriotic and run, wanna run with the American flag, but it can't be larger than three by five feet, regardless of how the fly, flag is intended to be carried. Uh, flag goal, uh, po poles cannot be longer than four feet or have a diameter more of four inches. So guys, if you're gonna be running with the flag, uh, take a look at this. The medical, the, uh, there's gonna be a lot of medical uh, on the course. There's gonna be uh, people on bikes who are gonna be trying to take care of you. I have seen them, I have uh, interacted with them. Here's an important one is the weather. Take Pay attention because they will be uh, putting these out. The green flag means it's good conditions. Uh, so, but stay alert, yellow a flag is gonna be less than ideal condition, so slow down and seek assistance if necessary. Red flags, potentially dangerous conditions. So all participants uh, urge to uh, slow their pace down. Black flag means they might cancel it. Race day information. Now this is uh, another one. So a uh, gear bag check, which uh, again, you're gonna get your gear bag with your shirts whenever you pick them up at the expo. So that's gonna be what you can check in with your gear bag. So don't bring your own bag because they're not gonna allow you to do that they may have some extra ones, so uh, just uh, just to let you know, if you leave your gear bag there, it just says right here you're gonna they're gonna put in the lost and found at Epcot Guest Relations, food and beverages. There's going to be some food and beverages, including some celebratory drinks there at the finish line, and also lost and found. Again, if you leave clothes on the course, they're gonna donate it. If uh, anything else, anything items, they're gonna put it into the Epcot Guest Relations lost and found. All right. Um, so we've gone through weather, race, uh, post-day information, post-race information, because we've gone over the, all this. So this is basically where you um, can get your your uh, your times, and uh, so that's going to be something easily. We've already gone over that, guys. So what else is here? We've got the LLS mission. Uh, we so basically covered everything. Uh, so when we go to the the booths, we're gonna we've already gone through the booths. If we scroll all the way down. It's gonna be basically the same as we've done before. One, let's see, we have one more tab. It's the future events. And guys, we got Disneyland a week afterwards. So I am going to do the Disneyland event guide after I do this one. 
So guys, it seems a little overwhelming, and if you're new to this, it's gonna be very overwhelming. But trust me guys, it's not as difficult as it looks or it sounds. Everything will kind of go, it just go with the flow, guys. But I did want to touch base on a few of them that I think are very, very, and I can't stress uh, how many very important uh, they are. So let's go over those. So number one, briefly, transportation. Remember, anything that is on site and that includes shades of green and includes uh, any one of the dolphin, the swan, the reserve, and of course, all the Disney resorts will all have buses. Buses to ESPN Wild World of Sports for the, uh, for the expo. So you will have that. That actually starts at about 30 minutes before. So 30 minutes before the expo starts. Is it a possibility? This happened to me at that Wine and Dine. Uh, the buses never got there, so we had to call a lift. Yes, that can happen, but you can share a lift. It's not that much. I think we paid $12, a uh, group of three of us, so it was real easy to get over there to ESPN. Wild World of Sports, guys. Uh, but again, uh, the, they're going to be running the shuttles 30 minutes before the expo starts until 30 minutes after the expo uh, closes each day. Now, to piggyback on that, guys, there is going to be transportation all the way throughout when it comes to the runs. So it's gonna be mainly buses, but again, as we saw, their monorail will be running for the half marathon and the full marathon for the Magic Kingdom Resorts. So if you're staying in one of those resort lines, then make sure that you uh, you get on there. So it's gonna be running at about 2.30, I think we saw that. And again, if you're gonna be spectating, the monorails will be going, so check out that spectating uh, tab. And, and find out when you're going to be able to get on that monorail to go back to the Transportation Center, Magic Kingdom, and of course Epcot. So guys, staying off-site, look at the road closures, guys. And not only look at the road closures, but, you know, at, at, as far as I can see, at 4 p at 4 a.m., I'm sorry, 4 a.m., they actually close the parking lot. So make sure that you get there before 4 a.m. so that way you don't have an excuse. More than likely, they'll let you in. There's a possibility. But don't quote me on that and don't quote anybody on that. Look at their guidelines, okay? So if you get there at 4.05 and they're closed, uh, again, it's not it's not their fault because that's what it is. So try to be uh, try to make the accommodation so you can get there on time. For the expo, remember this: virtual queue is going to be for day one, just day one of the expo, and it's for just merchandise. So guys, if you're just going to go pick up your bib, you're going to go pick up your your event shirts that come with your bib, and you might want to go and shop for a Honey Stinger and meet Jeff Galloway. Guys, uh, you don't have to get on the virtual queue. Guys, if you pre-ordered from what I was told, you could go uh, right in. So you're going to have to show them the tab that you pre-ordered. Uh, with that said, guys, I still would get the virtual queue just to make sure. And guys, remember the important part of the virtual queue is that it starts at 8.30 uh, that morning. So uh, that morning, it, even though the expo starts at 10, at 8.30 is when you can get your virtual queue to go into the merchandise uh, part of it. And you'll be called back similar to any of the Tron or uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, back in the day, Rise of the Resistance. It's going to be very similar to that, guys. So guys, just uh, remember if you haven't had practice with it, I will have a, a, a YouTube short. It's gonna be my first YouTube short, but I'll have it out before so I can uh, kind of guide you on what to do. And then remember that it is a maximum group of six. So guys, if you're more than six, either figure out if some people won't be able to go in or get a second person and they pick another group. And again, uh, maybe ask them if you can combine them. They might not let you, but if you got similar times, then hopefully you can guys go in together. Check-in pass, you're gonna need your check-in pass and as of now, it's supposed to fall sometime December 30th. Now you can do it digital, so you can take a snapshot of it, you can copy it, uh, I think you can put it into your wallet if you got an Apple iPhone and uh, if not, you can print it out. And again, that's gonna piggyback or piggyback to where you're wa when you signed your waiver. If you have not signed your waiver, you're not gonna get that. So that you need this plus your ID in order to pick up your bib, guys. So make sure that you got all this. Again, uh, if you don't have it, do not worry. You're gonna be able to get there, you're gonna be able to sign it, and then you're gonna be able to go pick up your bib. You're gonna be, you're gonna have to look up your information. Uh, trust me, it sounds a lot more complicated. There's gonna be somebody there to help you out. So you're gonna be able to find your number, you're gonna sign it, you're gonna go over there with your ID. The most important thing, which I still see people, and I guarantee you we're still gonna see it, 
Can I pick up a bib because, you know, whatever reason? You cannot pick up your bib for another adult. You can pick up a bib for somebody uh, that is under the age of 18 if you are the parent, uh, parent or the guardian. That's the only way that you can do that. But guys, um, stop asking over and over and over. But my, you know, my sister won't be able to go there. She's 35. Uh, can I get it for her? No. You still cannot do that. They will not allow that to, uh, you to do that. What I would do is contact Run Disney directly if something happens. Usually they're pretty good at if there is some kind of emergency, something that happens, something pops up. Uh, but contact them directly, okay? Now I'm going to reiterate something about transportation. Again, the buses start at 3 a.m. days of the runs for the 5K and the 10K. For the half and the full, it's going to be 2.30 a.m. Now this one is really, really important, so I'm going to put it back up on the board here over here. The group openings and closing, so you guys please, please, please pay attention to this. They're going to have signs. They're going to email us this group uh, a couple of days before, guys. But it's good. I guarantee you there's going to be somebody who's not going to pay attention. They're going to get there or they're just going to act like they didn't pay attention. They're going to get there late and they're going to say, hey, but I, I still want to get into A. And if you don't miss your cutoff time, they're not going to let you in, guys. So, guys, just get that into your mind that if you're an A and you get there a lot later, you might get into B, C, D, whichever one is, next one is open. And, and if all of them are closed, you get there past 530 you know, and they're still going on, you might be in the last corral. Guys, so don't get angry at the cast members. That is the policy. Again, if they start letting people into, you know, the corrals because they got there late, then every you would have pandemonium go. So don't, uh, uh, try to get there as, as, as early as you can. And if you missed your, your cutoff time, they've already closed your corral, just go to the next one and, and don't argue with them. It's not their fault. Another one that's important is don't cover your bib. If they cover, if you cover your bib, even if it's cold and you put something above it, just remember they're going to be asking and they have every right, according to the letter of the law, to pull you off of the course if you're covered that, uh, covering that bib. So if you're going to be layering on it, try to keep it on the top layer. Uh, again, I know I understand it could be difficult at times, but that's why the you know the uh, the little pin, not instead of the pins. They have the little things on the side that you can buy, uh, the little pop-up things. Uh, get those so you can pop them out, pop them back in. They're not that difficult to do. They're not easy to do, but they're not that difficult to do. But guys, because again, you don't want to be running and then all of a sudden, because of a technicality, they pull you off the course. So a couple more things. The race tracker, which is a tra track shack, I think, I believe, and we saw it there. It's going to open up a few days before. It'll probably going to have, it's probably going to have, I think, text. Uh, email and some kind of social media so that way your family can track you You can track yourself uh, as far as uh, maybe via text so that way you can get that so the last two one of them is you can't control is gonna be the weather guys uh, I know people are already posting about the weather and they might be a hundred percent right they might be a hundred percent wrong because they're already saying all right we're this many days out and stuff so now this is what it's gonna be this is what it's gonna be guys it can change like this and it has changed like that I've been there before where the night before it says it's going to be hot and it's cold. And then the night before it says it's going to be cold and it's hot. And you just never know. So guys, prepare for everything. Right now, you know, when people say, what should I pack? Pack everything. Pack uh, cold weather, hot weather, uh, running gear and be ready. Be prepared. Be prepared to walk out in the morning. Uh, see the night before and it says no chances of rain. Walking out and you're going to have to put on a rain poncho or something like that. That's going to happen. That's a possibility. It can happen. So just be careful. And the last thing is costume, guys. I didn't go over that video, but I did watch it a couple of times. Just think to yourself, anything that contours to your body, anything that you can layer and still looks contoured to your body, doesn't stick out anywhere, is fine. Even little tutus are fine for, for any of you guys who want to be uh, Tinkerbell, that kind of stuff. That's fine, guys. You, don't, you can't have anything that sticks out, anything that has sharp edges. Anything that looks like a weapon, anywhere that you can conceal a weapon, or it looks like you can, see, can conceal a weapon. Guys, just remember this. When you're sitting there going like, but I'm not going to do this, and I'm not going to do this. Just remember that all it takes is that one person that sneaks something in, and that could be a real big issue for the rest of us. So guys, just comply with what they have to do. You know, this is where it's, I think it's an awesome time, because it, especially if you're going to be in costume, you can start thinking to yourself, okay, what? 
what can I do to make it a little bit different instead of you know something that sticks out and stuff and that's the challenge I think that's a great challenge to have and I know a lot of you guys who have uh, put on costumes like that challenge so guys um, and basically that's it so guys I know I'm probably gonna miss one or two little minor things like there people are gonna say but you talked about this but what about this please comment down below I'll try to help out as much as you can uh, as much as I can but I like this if you read the whole guide 90% uh, of your questions are gonna be answered and I read that somewhere and I'm gonna piggyback and say I can actually say this probably close to 100% of your questions are gonna be answered there so just remember that uh, again I'm speaking from experience and I can I can tell you this when somebody puts oh I got away with this it doesn't mean that you can get away with it so guys read the guidelines follow them as closely as you can guys I would follow them close exactly what they say so that way there is no problems with that guys but guys any other questions that you have are you looking forward to this run uh, I'm gonna do another video with the Disneyland one uh, so that's coming up pretty quickly and uh, but guys uh, ask questions down below if you have any, any other questions and guys as usual guys create a magical day create a magical run and guys see us sooner than later